Mysterious vintage photos can be quite chilling, especially those with creepy backstories to go along with them. Most of these mysteries will likely never be solved, but that doesn't stop people from trying to explain them. Number 5 These vintage photographs of a mysterious figure from the 1800s definitely give off creepy vibes. A picture of him eating while dressed in a strange, stitched-together outfit, almost glaring at the camera, can give people chills. In reality, the Leatherman was known as a gentle and polite person, but one shrouded in mystery. Recent attempts to crack the case have only made him more mysterious. The Leatherman was first witnessed in 1857, when he was believed to be about 18 years old. He lived in New York but had no fixed address. Instead, he would walk in a circle between the Connecticut and Hudson Rivers. The route was 365 miles long, crossing between three different counties, and would take him a little over a month. At the end of it, he started again. He repeated the journey for the rest of his life. He would stay in caves in the areas where he visited, tending to gardens there, and using them to store supplies. He seemed to have money, though nobody knew where it was from. He would buy supplies from stores during his rounds and always paid for them. Once people realized he wasn't going to hurt anybody, the settlements he walked through welcomed his monthly visit. People would offer him food and considered it lucky to be visited by him. He spoke little English, mostly communicating through grunts and gestures, though he would thank the people who gave him food. He spoke a little more French but still didn't talk much at all. He never told anybody his name, but the people he met on his travels called him the Leatherman. The Leatherman was always dressed in a handmade suit made from shoe leather, stitched together with leather laces. It's believed that he made the suit, which consisted of slacks, a shirt, jacket, scarf, and hat. The suit weighed about 60 pounds, and he always wore it, even in the height of the summer. There were plenty of rumors about who the Leatherman might be, and why he was on this never-ending journey. One story suggested he was a rich Frenchman who had fallen in love with someone his family didn't agree with. When he couldn't marry the woman, he chose instead to become the Leatherman. Others thought it was some kind of penance for something. It was believed the Leatherman was Catholic as he had a French prayer book and wouldn't eat meat on Fridays. At one point, he was taken to a mental hospital. But after evaluation, the doctors determined there was nothing wrong with him, and they allowed him to leave. The Leatherman passed away in March of 1889 at the age of 50. An autopsy found it wasn't his strange traveling lifestyle that caused him to pass away, but rather his habit for chewing tobacco which caused mouth cancer. He was buried in a grave marked Jules Burgley, as a recent newspaper had claimed that this was his name. The newspaper retracted the story the day after he passed away though, and his true name was never discovered. For years, the Leatherman remained a mystery. In 2011 though, that mystery only deepened. A highway had been built close to the Leatherman's resting place, and people wanted to move the grave to a more central location in the graveyard. Archaeologists also wanted to take samples to see where the Leatherman had actually come from. The grave was dug up, but no coffin was discovered. The only thing that remained were the nails that once sealed it. The nails and some dirt from the original grave were reburied, and the legend of the mysterious Leatherman continued on. Number 4 These vintage photographs look relatively normal at first glance, but the story of the man featured is shrouded in mystery. It was 1908 when Joshua Slocum disappeared without a trace while traveling to South America. To this day, his fate remains a mystery. Slocum was one of the most famous sailors to have ever lived. He started sailing at the age of 16, and eventually worked his way up to become the captain of a variety of sailing boats. Not only was he skilled at map reading and traditional navigation, Slocum also practiced in the art of navigating by the night sky. After his first wife passed away, he married a cousin, and his family joined him on some of his adventures. They weathered fierce storms and shipwrecked in Brazil for a time in 1887. The experience left his wife with a hatred of sailing, but Slocum was still pulled to the sea. In 1891, 
he purchased a badly damaged oyster boat and started a passion project. Over the course of several months, he completely rebuilt the ship, naming it the Spray. In 1895, he started his most daring adventure yet, a solo circumnavigation of the world. On April 24, 1895, he left Boston, Massachusetts. For the next three years, he was alone at sea. His planned route had to be changed due to privacy. Storms stopped his voyage for more than a month, and at one point, a goat ate charts of the Caribbean. Despite the difficulties, Slocum managed something that had never been achieved before when he arrived in Rhode Island in June of 1898. The feat solidified his place as one of the masters of sailing, which made what happened even stranger. In 1908, he informed President Roosevelt of his next adventure. He wanted to sail to Venezuela and navigate South American rivers. He set off in November of 1908 from Massachusetts, heading south. It's believed he resupplied in Miami, then was never seen again. What happened to Slocum remains a mystery. Many, including his wife, believe he was simply lost at sea. He never learned to swim, so if he was swept overboard for some reason, he would have struggled to survive. Others believe his experience in tricky conditions would have made a simple sailing accident unlikely. Given his trip took him through the Bermuda Triangle, some suspect the mysterious and infamous waters had something to do with his disappearance. Another suggestion was that he faked his own disappearance to get away from his wife, as he felt more and more pressured to give up sailing. No trace of Slocum or the spray was ever found. Given more than a century has passed, it's unlikely the mystery will ever be truly explained, unless the spray is found on a deserted island someplace. In that case, vintage photographs like this will come in useful for identifying the ship. Number 3. The Battle of Los Angeles is one of the biggest wartime mysteries to take place in the mainland United States. Whether it was an enemy attack, weather balloons, or something else entirely, something caused the skies above downtown Los Angeles to be lit up with anti-aircraft weapons on February 25, 1942. It also teaches us that even vintage photographs might not tell the whole truth. In early 1942, the Western United States were gripped in the paranoia that the Japanese army might launch a mainland attack. Anti-aircraft weaponry had been sent to important cities on the West Coast, including Los Angeles. It seemed like those fears were proven correct on February 23rd. A Japanese submarine launched a strike against an oil field not far off the coast of Santa Barbara. Only minor damage was sustained, but it was clear the East Coast was within reach. The following evening, military intelligence warned Los Angeles that the city would be the next target, and that an attack would come within the next 10 hours. For several hours, the city was on high alert. Then at 2.25 a.m., the air raid sirens sounded. Radar had spotted something in the air coming from the Pacific, and people on the ground saw white lights in the skies. It was a clear, moonlit night, the perfect time for an air raid and there was no reason to believe this wasn't the expected enemy attack. Spotlights were lit up to try to find the aircraft that the lights were presumably attached to, while air raid marshals scrambled to enforce a blackout among the civilian population. More than 1,400 rounds of ammunition were fired into the air, and the sound of the sirens was accompanied by loud bangs. Many people were injured as they tried to get to safety. Three people lost their lives due to car crashes. Two more suffered heart attacks. The Great Los Angeles Air Raid would continue for about an hour before the all-clear was announced and the city became silent again. It was discovered no aircraft had fallen from the skies, and the Navy was quick to label the incident a false alarm. This was despite many civilians and military personnel claiming to have seen multiple planes in the sky. The Secretary of War also said that there were 15 planes in the sky that night. Eventually, the official response claimed the Battle of Los Angeles was caused by high tensions and the release of weather balloons with lights on them. The famous photo of the battle featured in papers around the country the following day. It has fueled conspiracy theories. The photo was retouched before being printed 
which wasn't uncommon at the time. However, the position of the small white lights surrounding the searchlights is believed to have been kept the same. Whether the Battle of Los Angeles really was just weather balloons or something else, it was definitely one of the weirder history stories. Number 2 The SS Watertown picture has become one of the most mysterious and creepy ghost photos to have been captured on camera. The photo is almost 100 years old, but still has people baffled about what could have caused it. The mysterious photo was allegedly captured in 1924 by Captain Keith Tracy aboard the SS Watertown somewhere in the Atlantic. He believed it to be proof of a haunting he and his shipmates had been experiencing for weeks. In January of 1924, two sailors aboard the ship lost their lives when a gas pipe leaked into the room they were supposed to be cleaning. Another sailor tried to get them out of the room, but they'd already passed away. Their names were Michael Mian and James Courtney. A small service was held aboard the ship, which was transporting oil between California and New Orleans. The two men who had passed had only been on their first trip with the Watertown when the incident occurred, and they preferred to keep to themselves so they hadn't made any friends among the other crew. When the captain asked if anybody wanted to say anything in memorial for them, nobody spoke. The two men were buried at sea, and the Watertown continued its trip. Mian and Courtney would not be left behind, though. Their faces would appear off the side of the ship. The apparition would only last a couple of seconds, but it happened so many times that everybody aboard saw the faces, including the captain. When they docked again, the captain tried to tell the owners, a company called a City Services Company, but he wasn't believed. He returned to sea with the camera to get the proof that he needed. When the two ghost faces appeared again, he took six photographs and then locked the camera away so no one could tamper with it. When the photos were developed, five showed nothing but the sea, but the sixth was a shot of the ship looking towards the forecastle as a wave crashed over the side of the ship. On the opposite side, almost too hard to see among the waves, were the two faces. The story quickly spread in newspapers and the company kept the photo hanging in their office for decades. Unfortunately, the original negative has been lost. Many suspect some form of photo manipulation caused the faces in the photo. It could also be a case of pareidolia. It seems possible, though, that the sailors did see something, as reliable people like the ship's doctor also claimed to have seen the ghostly faces. Number 1 Vintage images of unidentified flying objects or UFOs are always some of the most chilling especially those that cannot be explained. The McMinnville UFO photographs look like the stereotypical image of an old extraterrestrial sighting, but an investigation by the U.S. Air Force left investigators baffled. It was May 11, 1950, and a woman named Evelyn Trent was feeding rabbits in the yard when she saw something strange in the sky above her farm, just outside the town of McMinnville, Oregon. She described it as silvery, round, and wingless, and said it didn't make a noise as it moved towards them. She rushed inside to get her husband, who brought the couple's camera out to take photos of the unexplained object in the sky. Her husband, Paul, managed to take two photographs before the UFO disappeared into the mist. This wasn't the first time Evelyn had seen UFOs. On multiple occasions, she had claimed to see something strange over the coast, but this was the first time she caught anything on camera. When the Trents had the pictures developed, the two images clearly showed something. One image showed a dark, oval-shaped object against a white sky. The other was more translucent. The photos made their way to the local press and were then discovered by the national media. When the U.S. Air Force began its investigation into UFOs, the McMinnville photographs were among some cases that were looked into. While most cases were thrown out as hoaxes or known phenomena, whatever Evelyn and Paul had seen in the sky that day could not be explained by any conventional means. It was deemed no photo manipulation had taken place. After interviewing the Trents, they were deemed credible witnesses. Paul tried to put the sighting behind him, but Evelyn continued to be fascinated by UFOs and her encounter that continues to defy explanation. Thank you guys so much for watching. 
If you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But my name is Ty Knotts, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.